So what I did my paper on was the uh, the Dark Knight, the second one in the Christopher Nolan series. There's Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and then The Dark Knight Rises. All right, so I did this with symbolic uh, convergence theory, and basically I'll kind of go over what I'm going to talk about here. I'll give you a quick summary of the movie, the dramatizing message um, of the movie as well, the symbolic uh, convergence theory, and then also I'll be talking about the uh, fantasy theme as well. So basically, uh, just to give you a quick summary of what the movie's about, it's about Bruce Wayne, aka Batman, of course. Um, basically, it, it's an year after Batman begins. So Gotham is starting to get back to its former glory, pretty much. Um, Batman's cleaning up the streets with crime. You know, everything's going really good uh, after a year, and, you know, soon after, you know, Batman might be done and say, you know, you know, because all the crime's done and I don't need to be here. No one needs me uh, anymore, so I don't have to be uh, working with this. And until um, the, probably the biggest villain he's probably ever faced is the Joker, played by Heath Ledger, probably one of the best performances by uh, uh, actor like, ever. And um, there's a scene in the movie uh, that, uh, that happens where he steals the mob's money. And the mob is basically within Gotham, and they kind of they're kind of downgrading a little bit because, well, the cops are after him, and of course the Batman's after him too, so they're kind of dealing with a lot of things here. And the Joker uh, goes in on their little, he goes, uh, well, he calls it a group therapy sessions in broad daylight, and um, he, goes, he goes in there and he's like, you know, all high and mighty because he st just stole their money, and they're all like looking at him like, you know, why should we just kill you now? And he goes, well, I kind of know what your problem is here, guys. And he said, um, first thing, I know why you have these meetings in broad daylight. And I also know, you know, what, what keeps you, you know, from doing anything at night. The Batman. And basically, uh, he's saying, like, I can take care of this problem. <coughs> and they're like, how much do you want? And then they're like, well, I want half. And then they're like, well, why? And they're like, they're like laughing. They're like, what? Well, why haven't you done it already? And they're basically saying, and he's basically saying, if you're gonna do something, never do it for free. And then they're like, whoa, like he's like legit here. Hold on. <laughs> and um, basically, he uh, goes up from that scene. He's like, he's got like grenades or something like that. And he's like, you know, laughing at him, just saying like, hey, I could blow this out of proportion here. <laughs> and um, he, so basically, uh, what what he's doing here is the dramatizing message message is basically saying like what, you know, what your intentions are, saying, like, here's my message to you in order for you to do something for me. And they don't know what his intentions are, but they know, hey, if he takes care of the Batman, then, whoa, like, we got this. Um, so the next uh, scene that I'm going to talk about here discusses the fantasy theme. And um, Harvey Dent, just a little background on him, is a political or uh, district attorney, more like he's kind of the head guy that uh, is putting all these criminals away. And um, there's a scene where he is trapped within, he, he's trapped by the Joker or his men, or the mob's men as well. It's very confusing, you have to see the movie. But basically, he uh, gets saved by Batman, but the side of his face is burnt off a little bit. So basically, um, he goes to the hospital, and the Joker is threatening to blow up the hospital. And this scene right here kind of uh, talks about uh, what the Joker is trying to do what is the Joker is trying to do to Harvey Dent, trying to like convert him to say, hey, you know, Batman did this to you, and basically I can show you what's right about because Harvey Dent in the scene he gets captured, and also um, his love interest uh, Rachel Dawes gets captured as well, but she dies because he picks between one of them. So here is the scene.
schemers how pathetic their attempts to control things really are. So basically what he's talking about here is the fantasy theme is telling Harvey, like, you know, hey, I just beat you. You're defeated. And you know what? I got a solution for you here. And basically, during the scene, he tells Harvey, he's like, um, introduce a little anarchy, pretty much, and go out and find people responsible for killing your love interest. And that's what Harvey does. And he goes out and he finds people and he kills these officers that were part of his plan. And um, basically, the Joker is the master of manip manipulator here in this whole film. I mean, he just, I mean, it's unbelievable how he can manipulate people into thinking uh, like, hey, this is the right way. Chaos is the right way. And, you know, Joker represents chaos. Batman represents, you know, justice and stuff like that. But uh, leading into my next thing as well, the symbolic convergence theory, uh, or symbolic cue as well. Um, at the end of the movie, um, Harvey Dent dies, and Batman realizes, you know, how much, how many people he's let die because of the Joker. And the Joker pretty much is, uh, you know, he's caused all this damage, and Batman feels like he's the one that caused all those deaths um, because, you know, of the Joker. But he feels like it's on him. So he's talking to Commissioner Gordon after uh, this all goes down. He goes, I, I'm not the right hero that Gotham needs right now. And he just basically rides off in the distance, and they basically pin the blame or the death um, of Harvey Dent on Batman, just so that they have, you know, a story to, you know, put out there. And basically, you know, this, in conclusion, this whole movie is basically about, you know, what damage the Joker can do to a uh, figure like Batman, like a vigilante, like a hero. He's, he's saying, like, look, I can kill all these people and make Batman look like the villain here. And basically, you know, he, you know, forced it down their throat saying, like, I can control this whole city. And I can make it to where it was again, because Gotham used to be a place of turmoil and, like, crime was all over the streets and nobody, like, lawyers and all these other uh, people didn't have power. Uh, like, you know, the high, like, Harvey Dent didn't have power. I mean, the police were, like, working with the mob and crime as well. So basically, um, this, uh, the Joker, and with the research question I had mentioned earlier, what is the motives of every character? And pretty much the Joker and Batman, Joker's motive is to pretty much <coughs> got them apart, just want to watch the world burn. Batman just wants to, uh, you know, uh, have justice, make sure that everything um, is right in Gotham City because that's how his parents did it and that's how he wants to do it. But being kind of a hero to Gotham was something he wanted. Thank you.